So my name is Joe Scott Jones. I'm here talking to Peter Moody uh, from the Karori Medical Center. Uh, you've just completed your keynote address to the National Rural Health Conference, Peter. The, um, what were the key messages that you were uh, seeking to get across? Um, we had a couple of key messages. One was what had happened to the primary care working group report, which was reporting to the minister back in 2015. Mm -hmm. So we gave an update on that. And then we moved across into the concept of healthcare homes because it does relate to some of the recommendations that we did in the, in the report. Mm. And then finally, I just gave some figures from our own experience in healthcare homes at the Karori Medical Centre. Mm. So tell us about the, uh, the report. Um, is the, can you, are you able to sort of summarise um, some of the key messages? Yeah, well, uh, the, there, were, there was a major recommendation and then some secondary recommendations. Mm. The primary recommendation, which was to rejig um, the whole capitation system and make funding follow patients rather than practices, um, that that was uh, that was the main focus of our of our report. Mm. The result has been that nothing has really been done about that, yeah. which is sad. But uh, never know, th things take time. Yes. Yeah. Um, the secondary recommendations, um, by chance, come out very closely to the to the ideas of a healthcare home. Mm. And uh, so, in a way, those, those secondary recommendations have probably been implemented very well. Mm. So the, um, the secondary recommendations were around needing to increase capacity in primary care, um, for example? Well, it wasn't so much capacity, it was efficiency. It was a, a improving efficiency and widening the expertise of general practice yeah. and getting better integration between primary and secondary care. Mm. The, and um, the um, improving efficiency. Um, I picture in my mind um, a, uh, uh, a conveyor belt of patients sort of passing <laughs> through a machine with you know uh, Charlie Chaplin sort of knocking <laughs> them on knocking the head. On with the head. A, <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, you know, I mean, from our own experience, I mean, we, we once you start to look at your own efficiency, you realise that there's quite a lot you can do. Yeah. Whether it's managing your phone calls, um, whether it's uh, making greater use of portals instead of phone calls, all of those sort of things. And uh, I would have to say within our practice, we're already beginning to see that we're not just making savings, but we're, we're beginning to cut down certain jobs and that means we can redeploy them into other areas of the practice. Yeah. So that's the sort of thing that I mean by efficiency, yeah. rather than sort of being able to see 69 patients in the morning. Yes, yeah, I mean, because I think there is a tendency for us at the moment just to try and see more patients more quickly and to take on more staff in order to deal with the increasing burden of people that were uh, uh, are knocking on our door and are presenting to us. And that shift of care from the hospital to primary care, yeah. our sense is that we've just got to do more do and do it quicker. Yes. Um, and um, but uh, I think um, that efficiency is around doing things in a, a smarter way yep. um, so that we're actually able to, to, to free up our nurses' time and our own time so that we can, we can actually cope with the, the, the higher levels of, of care. Have you found that you're seeing more complex patients as a result? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. And we're tending to do more for them, yeah. either instead of or before referring them. Right. And, and that's quite satisfying medicine. But if, you, if you're going to get complex patients, you've got to have time to deal with them. Yeah. Because the other way, the conveyor belt of I'm going to see lots and lots of patients, uh, actually capitation works against you. Because yeah. all you're doing is you're eating your own arm. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, unless you're charging the patients a lot of money. And yeah. uh, so, so being smart, um, focusing on those who really do need the care, and doing something efficient with those who have got the minor problems, yeah. I think is way to go. So what was it about the healthcare home model that um, uh, helps to address that efficiency what, what, how, and the, uh, to, to Im improve the way that you can do things? Well, um, the efficiency type of things, I mean, I think um, uh, we, we've had people with project management coming in and helping us um, look at some of that stuff, but mm -hmm. I think it's just simply if you start to measure some of the things that you do, what you do is you suddenly realise that you might be doing them the wrong way. Mm. And uh, so that, there's nothing new about that. There's nothing magical about it. Mm. I mean, uh, um, Toyota have done it, did it for many, many years. And uh, so I, it, you, it, it's, that's just what plain businesses do. They always try and 
make, their, make themselves as efficient as possible because mm. it reduces their costs. Mm. So the patient portal allows you to um, deal with patient problems um, virtually through email uh, and um, telephone triage as part of it as well? Yeah, we, we haven't found a huge benefit with telephone triage, okay. I have to say, but we have invested very heavily in Manage My Health yeah. in the portal. Yeah. And uh, we, there's always a worry that it's going to take work away from you. Mm. In fact, what we find is that it, it once again, it makes us more efficient. Mm. And um, as an example, um, I might have to see a patient, I say, well, look, you know, I want to see you in a week's time see how you are. Mm. But on the other hand, I could actually say to them, look, rather than coming in and wasting everybody's time, just send me a message and tell me how you are. Mm. And what we've found is that when the patient knows that they're talking directly to the doctor, they, they give you very accurate information mm. and uh, they don't exaggerate and of course then they, do, they don't lose the time off work and you then got that time to be able to use for somebody else and that's, that's yeah. the way the world should work. Yeah. Are you uh, using any uh, different uh, health professionals within your uh, practice? Or the well, yeah, we've, we've always had a, a, a lot of health professionals around us. Mm. Uh, and that was before Healthcare Home. Um, we have a, we have a counsellor, uh, we've got uh, physiotherapists, we've got podiatrists, we've got midwives. Right working beside us, yes. uh, not necessarily as part of us, but the counsellor is part of us. And um, so we have a number of those. And um, we've always had doctors who have had special interests. So we've got that as well. So an ultrasound scan machine in your practice, for yes. example, I hear? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, we, we, we invested in that. Uh, I don't know how my partners let us let me talk them into it. Yeah. <laughs> and, but they said, oh, for God's sake, yes, we can try it and see how it goes. But you know, by providing those sorts of services, yeah. we can prevent people from going into the hospital service at all yeah. and save the whole system yeah. um, quite significantly. Um, and uh, it's, part of our conversation has to be about how we uh, get the system to recognise those services that we're providing and, and enable us to keep doing that I and think, do it better. I think that's the critical element. Yeah. Um, plainly, we're not making money out of our ultrasound, uh, but it's nice to be at the cutting edge. Yeah. Um, we now know a lot about it and we know a lot about how we are making changes as a result. And if we can convert that into, into action from the DHBs, that would be great. Yeah. I was really impressed with the data that you presented from your own practice and that um, you know, being a reflective practitioner yeah. um, and uh, but being that, taking that to the next level and actually producing the evidence of the, the changes that you've implemented uh, really enables that conversation, doesn't it? And um, you know, that was I just... I, I, think, I think in general practice, when we've got time, the more we measure, the more powerful we become. Yeah. Um, because other people don't have that sort of data. They can't even dream about it. No. And I, I particularly refer to the hospitals in that way because they're so poorly computerized that, um, that in fact, data collection like that they can't do. Yeah. And we can show them the way forward in a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. So you had a take home message about the, um, uh, the healthcare home model in particular. Um, the, that you shared with the uh, the, the conference, yes, um, the that was to that we should just get on and do it. Yes, that's um, right. The why do you think that? Because um, one, it's it's interesting. I I like being at the forefront of some of those things. Mm. So, but it's made my life much more interesting. I'm doing more interesting things. And, and as I say, I think we've got to claim back primary care. Primary care, for me, is a specialty by its very generalism. Mm. And we've got to get people to understand that, but we've got to demonstrate it. We can't just talk about it. Thanks, Peter. Thank An you. urban generalist with rural tendencies. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much.